A warm greeting. Today is Friday, May 23, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In nine days, the Atlantic hurricane season officially begins. Yesterday, NOAA released its forecast regarding the cyclonic activity they anticipate for this year. Overall, NOAA is forecasting that between 13 to 19 tropical storms will form, when the average is 14. They also project that between 6 to 10 of these storms could strengthen into hurricanes, when the average is 7 hurricanes. Additionally, they forecast that between 3 to 5 hurricanes could reach major hurricane status, that is, Category 3, Category 4, or Category 5, when the average is 3. In terms of probabilities, NOAA projects that there is up to a 60% chance that the hurricane season will be more active than normal. They also estimate a 30% chance of a near-normal season, and only a 10% chance of a below-normal season. So, as other groups had already forecasted and as we've been discussing in recent months, there are several indicators we are taking into consideration. There is essentially a total consensus among experts that this upcoming hurricane season is very likely to be more active than normal. I'd now like to talk about the reasons why NOAA is forecasting a more active than normal hurricane season. As usual, let's start by analyzing sea surface temperature anomalies in the oceans, where we have at least two indicators suggesting a potentially more active hurricane season. One of these indicators is ENSO conditions, which remain neutral in the equatorial Pacific region. Additionally, average sea surface temperatures across the tropical Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and Gulf of Mexico continue to be above normal. First, let's talk about ENSO conditions. In this image, you can see that dynamic ENSO forecast models continue to project that during the peak of the season, August, September, and October, it is very likely that ENSO will remain in neutral conditions. If these projections hold, that would mean reduced wind shear across the Atlantic, which can favor the formation and strengthening of tropical cyclones. In fact, NOAA's latest ENSO forecast shows that for the months of August, September, and October, there is nearly a 55% chance of neutral conditions. There's also about a 32% chance of La Nina conditions, and only about a 12-13% to chance of El Nino conditions. So this means there is nearly an 87% chance of either neutral or La Nina conditions during the peak of the season. Historically, in years when we have either neutral or La Nina conditions, the Atlantic hurricane season tends to be more active than normal. Now let's talk about the other indicator, which is the sea surface temperature anomalies in the tropical Atlantic, particularly in the main development region, MDR for cyclones, which extends from the Cape Verde Islands to the Western Caribbean Sea. As you can see in this image, sea surface temperature anomalies are above normal across much of the Western Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. These warmer-than-normal anomalies are shown in yellow and reddish colors, which basically cover the entire Western Atlantic region and areas near the intertropical convergence zone between the Caribbean and Africa. One very significant change we're seeing this year compared to last year is that the area between the Caribbean and Africa now has regions with near-normal temperatures, which is a big difference from what we saw last year. This could help limit cyclonic activity between the Caribbean and Africa. However, our concern is that the warmer sea surface temperature anomalies in the western Atlantic could favor the formation and strengthening of cyclones closer to land, so this is something we'll be monitoring closely as we approach the start of the season. If we begin by analyzing the average sea surface temperature anomalies in the region where tropical cyclones most commonly form, you can see in the next graph, shown in blue, how these temperatures have varied over the course of this year. I wanted to highlight that although on average the temperatures are warmer than normal, where normal is represented by the black line, you can see that we are well below what was recorded during 2024 and 2023. So even though the average temperatures in the main development region are a bit warmer than normal, the good news is that they're not as warm as they were in 2024 and 23. If we focus a bit more westward, in the Caribbean Sea region, you can see the blue line indicating values that are significantly warmer than normal, though fortunately not as warm as in 2024, but still warmer than what we had in 2023. We see the same pattern in the Gulf of Mexico, where temperatures have warmed quite rapidly in recent weeks and are currently near record highs, similar to what was observed in 2023 and 2024. So while it's good news that temperatures between the Caribbean and Africa are not as hot as they were last year, we are concerned that anomalies remain quite high across the Western Atlantic. Another indicator is that predictions suggest the monsoon trough over Western Africa will be quite active this summer, and this can favor the formation of strong tropical waves, which we call the seeds of hurricanes. This is because, historically, they generate the most powerful hurricanes. So, an active African monsoon trough could lead to increased cyclone activity due to strong tropical waves. Although there are other parameters we can also analyze, these three indicators give us an idea of how active this season could be. For example, 
This week the UK Met Office released its forecast, in which they are predicting the formation of 16 tropical storms, when the average is 14. They also forecast that nine of these could strengthen into hurricanes, when the normal is seven. Of those, four could reach major hurricane status, category three, four, or five, when the normal is three. Something very interesting we've seen in several expert forecasts is the prediction of high accumulated cyclone energy, ACE, well above the climatological average. Remember that ACS is a value that measures the intensity and duration of cyclones. So a forecast with high AC suggests that some of the hurricanes that form this year could last a long time, which would represent a greater threat to the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the rest of the United States. In fact, in terms of ACEs, 160 units is considered a hyperactive season. On average, the forecasts released so far are predicting around 148 units, which could mean we may have long-lasting hurricanes this year. I'd also like to show you the average forecast for tropical storms. Different agencies and groups are, on average, predicting the formation of 16 tropical storms. Remember, the average is 14. In terms of hurricanes, these groups and specialists are forecasting an average of 8 hurricanes, when the normal is 7. Well, that's all for this video. I hope we're all prepared for the hurricane season. And remember, regardless of how much cyclonic activity is expected this year, it's important for everyone to be prepared, because a single hurricane can impact the region where you live. Before I go, I want to invite you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to click the red button to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. With that, I say goodbye. Until the next video, see you later.